Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a video that everybody and their mother has already done, and that is my most anticipated releases of 2021. So, um, yeah, the title is pretty self explanatory. I'm going to be talking about the books that I'm excited are that are coming out this year, and that I'm excited to read, and that I will probably buy. Um, I just like keeping a list of some of my most anticipated releases. I've never actually done a video. I have tried to do one every single year, but never have. So, yeah, I have, I don't know how many books I have on my list, but I have quite a few. I'm probably not going to get to all of these. These are just the ones that I am interested in reading. Most of them are sequels, but some of them are, you know, first books in series or standalones, and the ones that are first book in series or standalones are probably, like, most likely from authors that I've read and enjoyed from before, so, yeah. But, uh, three of the books on this list I have already, uh, have already come out, and one of them I've already read, and a few of them I have in my possession in, like, arc form and stuff like that. Let's just get started with January. The first book on my list is Lore by Alexandra Bracken. This is a YA urban fantasy standalone that rec recently came out on the 5th of January. And this book, um, in this sort of, like, alternate world that is based off our own, um, there, every seven years for seven days, there is a hunt where these gods from Greek mythology walk the earth as mortals and can be killed because everyone wants to kill a god to attain divinity. And so, for seven days, every seven years, these gods walk the earth, and our main character is named Laura Perseus, and she's a descendant of... Perseus, I think his name is, who um, was the person who slayed Medusa, and um, basically in the last hunt, which is called the Agone, her entire family was brutally murdered, and so as a new one is coming up, she sort of has to deal with, you know, trauma, and also um, a friend from childhood named Castor, who she thought was dead, and also a gravely wounded Athena, who shows up on Laura's doorstep and offers her a deal. So I'm very excited to read this book. I really like mythology books. I'm not the biggest fan of Greek mythology. I don't know much about it, but I did like learning about it um, last year in freshman year, because like when we read the Odyssey and stuff. I thought it was very interesting, and so I'm excited to read this book. Um, but the main reason I'm excited is because it's by Alexandra Bracken, and I've read quite a few of her novels. I've read like six, maybe, and I've really enjoyed all of them. So I have faith that I will enjoy this book as well. The next book is the one that I've already read, and that is Across the Green Grass Fields by Sean and McGuire, and this came out on the 12th. This, um, I'm not really going to go into because I'm going to talk about it next week in my January wrap-up, but did just want to mention it. The next one is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas, which comes out, or came out on January 12th, and this is a prequel to The Hate You Give. It follows Maverick, who is Star's father. Star is the main character of The Hate You Give, and it takes place 17 years before. And I know very little about it except for that. I still have not read The Hate You Give. I plan on reading it in February. Um, I kind of want to binge read um, The Hate You Give on Come Up and Concrete Rose in February, but I am very excited to read this nonetheless, even though I have not read any Angie Thomas books. I am... Like, I have faith that I will enjoy the book, just because everyone has enjoyed it, and I don't know why I haven't gotten around to it yet. I just have not, but I am definitely excited to get my hands on a copy of this and see if I like it. Um, so that's it for January. Moving into February, the first book that I have is The Four Winds by Kristin Hanna, which comes out on February 2nd. This book is something I normally would not be very excited to read, um, but the author, Kristin Hanna, wrote two of my favorite books of last year, 2020, and I am very excited to read more of her writing. All I know about this is that I think it takes place in the 30s during the Dust Bowl and also the Great Depression or something like that. I don't know. All I know is that it has to do with dust, so I'm guessing the Dust Bowl because that makes sense. And again, normally I wouldn't be interested in this if I just read the synopsis, but since it's written by Christine Hanna, I'm sure that I will at least enjoy my time reading it, even if it's not a favorite. So. I am excited to get my hands on this and see what it's about and see if I like it. Next, uh, coming out on February 16th, I have a book that I'm sure everyone has on their list, and that is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. This is the fourth, technically fifth book in the Court of Thorns and Roses series. I, like, 
admittedly really enjoy Sarah J Mass. I've read all of her books except for that Catwoman book that she did. So um, yeah, I, I might read that book, but I have read all of her books except for that one. And I'm very excited to get my hands on a copy of Court of Silver Flames. It is, um, it follows Nesta and Cassian, I believe, who are side characters in um, the original A Court of Thorns and Roses series, and it follows them. And I'm not, like, fiending to find out what happens in this series. I did enjoy Akatar, but it's probably, I definitely like Throne of Glass more than A Court of Thorns and Roses, but I am still excited to see what she does with this. I realized that recently, um, after, ever since I read Empire of Storms, which is like one of my least favorite um, Sarah J Maas books, I have been very apprehensive going into them, like with Tower of Dawn and Kingdom of Ash and Crescent City, which I read, read last year. Tower of Dawn and Kingdom of Ash ended up on my favorite books of the year list, and I really enjoyed Crescent City, and so I think I'm just like forever going to be apprehensive about her books from now on, which I guess is good because I end up enjoying them more than I think, but I am definitely apprehensive about this, especially since I didn't love Akatar and I didn't love Nesta or Cassian that much, but we shall see how I enjoy this book. Moving into March, we have many books. March is like always, like consistently a very like big month for book releases. The first one on my list is Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare, which is the second book in the Last Hours series. I cannot wait to read this book. I am so excited. Chain of Gold made it onto my favorite books of the year list, and I'm just, I need to know what happens next. I only read Chain of Gold back in November, and I'm still just, like, not okay, and I need to figure out what happens in Chain of Iron. I've never had to wait for a Cassandra Clare book to come out because I've never been caught up before, but now that I'm caught up, I hate waiting, and I don't know how I'm going to survive between a Chain of Iron and Chain of Thorns, but I'm so excited for this. I am going to be doing a Chain of Gold book review. Um, I've had like notes in my phone for so long, and I am going to be doing a full in-depth review which should be coming in, like, close to the release of Chain of Iron. And I also plan on doing a reading vlog for Chain of Iron, and I'm going to talk about all my theories. I literally have a notes section in my phone with all my theories, and it is very in-depth. But, um, yeah, I'm going to talk about my theories in that book and also uh, vlog me reading it, so you can see me freak out. But I'm so excited for Chain of Iron. I know I'm going to love it because... I've read the first two chapters because they were released online um, for like the, uh, what is it called? The Fierce Reads Christmas or something like that? I don't know. But, um, so I've read the prologue in chapter one and I'm so excited to continue. I just need to figure out what happens. And her second books are always so good. Like her second books and trilogies. I know this is going to end on a massive cliffhanger and I'm not ready. But I also just need to figure out <laughs> what is going to happen next. Next, also on March 2nd, I have Bridge of Souls by Victoria Schwab, which is the third book in the City of Ghosts, or Cassidy Blake series. The first book was City of Ghosts, and the second book was Tunnel of Bones. I really enjoy Victoria Schwab, and I'm excited to see what happens next in this series. Um, I All I know about it is that it takes place in New Orleans, so, yes. Next is a book that I'm, like, not super excited about, but I will probably end up reading it, and it also comes out on March 2nd, and that is Phoenix Flame by Sarah Holland. This is the sequel to, um, Havenfall, which I read last year and enjoyed. I just like portals. Like, portal fantasy I think is so cool. I think portals are just so cool, and I really want to figure out, or, like, just see what happens next in the series. I'm not, like, expecting to love it or anything, but I do want to see where she takes the series, because I think it could be interesting. Um, and then the last book that comes out in March is definitely another one, like, with Chain of Iron, that's, like, my top three, top five, and that is Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo, which comes out on the 30th of March, and I honestly cannot wait for this book. Um, I can't talk about it because it's the sequel to King of Scars, and also it's, like, the, I don't know, the, like, eighth or ninth book in the Christopher's, but I cannot wait. I'm also going to be doing a reading vlog for this book, so look out for that, but I cannot wait. It's going to be, like, 600 pages. It's just going to be so good, and I cannot wait, and I'm just, I need to, I need to know what happens, and I need, like, cliffhanger at the end of King of Scars 
was so rude and I just need to see how it's all going to wrap up and I cannot wait to be back in this world and I just need, I, if you've read King of Scars, you know how I'm feeling about <laughs> that ending and I need to figure out what happens. Um, next, all the books that I have coming out, I have on my April list all come out on the 6th and the first of that is Blessed Monsters by Emily Duncan's, the third and final book in the, sh what is it called, the something dark and holy, some, something like that, and um, the first book was Wicked Saints, the second book was Ruthless Gods. I enjoyed both of those books, I didn't love them, but I invested enough time that I want to figure out what happens at the end and see how it all wraps up. I'm not, like, expecting this to be a five star, like, so amazing, but I do think I will enjoy it enough. That series is sort of just like a guilty pleasure, so I'm interested to see how it all wraps up and how she you know, comes up with an interesting ending to the series, but again, I'm not like fiending to find out what happens, but I do really want to see how things are going to end up, so. Then I also have Aru Shah and City of Gold by Roshni Chakshi, which is the fourth book in the Pandava series. The first was Aru Shah and the End of Time, then Aru Shah and the Song of Death, then Aru Shah and the Tree of Wishes. I love Roshni Chakshi, she's one of my favorite authors, and I cannot wait for the next book in this series. It is the penultimate book, so book four, we have one more after it. Cannot wait, I'm so excited, and I just really, really want to see what happens. And I know I've been saying that like 50,000 million times in this video, but it's true. I want to see what happens, and I'm interested, so, you know, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Then, I have Life's Too Short by Abby Jimenez. This is, like, technically the third book in the Friend Zone series, but they're not, like, related or anything. Well, they are, but they're not, like, sequels. They're companions. So, first book was the Friend Zone, second book was the Happy Ever After playlist. The Friend Zone is, like, one of my favorite romance books, like, adult romance books. And the Happy Ever After... English? The Happy Ever After playlist was good. But I have a feeling that I will enjoy this book more just because I don't love the Happy Ever After playlist just because it dealt with music and I just don't really care about media with music and stuff. So I'm definitely, I have a feeling that this will be more like the friend zone and I'm just interested to see what happens. I have no idea what it's about, but I want to know, like, I want to see what, what, it, what it's like. And they're really great summer books, so I probably won't read this, like, when it comes out. Or, I, I might, but I probably will wait till, like, June or July, so. Then, moving into May, um, the first one that I have is Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller. This book comes out on May 4th. Um, I have exactly zero idea <laughs> what this book's about. I saw the cover, thought it was interesting. I can't tell you any more than that. Then, also on the 4th, I have Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. I just know it's a fantasy and I'm interested. I probably, I might not actually buy this, but I will probably read it. So I might get the audiobook or I might like get the ebook or something. So like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna get, I might wait for some reviews to come out and then see how I feel about it. Then on the 11th, I have People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. She's the author that wrote Beach Read, which is like one of the biggest romance books that came out last year. I read it. I enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite. I thought it would be more of, like, a beach read. Like, I thought it would be more of, like, a, you know, just fun romance book. But it was a little more serious. But I heard that... Wait, did Emily Henry say that this book is more serious or more, uh, romance-y? Can't remember. But, um, I'm excited to read it nonetheless. I... I think I'll enjoy it more than beach read. But... You know, I may not, and that's fine, but I do just want to give her another chance, because um, I feel like Beach Read just wasn't my thing. But I definitely want to see what this book is about, because I don't know. I'm just interested for some reason. Then on May 18th, I have The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. Christina Lauren is one of my favorite authors. They are a writing duo, so Christina and Lauren. And I've read quite a few of their books, and I look forward to them every single time they come out. So. Definitely, definitely, definitely interested in what this book will be. Um, don't know anything about it, but I am excited. They're not a buy author for me, so excited to see what happens. Although I am a little bit pressed that this book is coming out in hardcover and not paperback, because all of their books have come out in paperback, so I might just like get it on Scribd or something, or buy the ebook. 
because I can't just have one hardcover from an author and all other paperbacks. It goes against just my, my law of things, so that's another thing. The next book I also have an arc for, and that is The Ivies by uh, um, Alexa Dunn. This comes out on the 25th. And um, all I know about this book is that it's like killer college admissions. That's it. I'm excited to read it. I have an arc. Hopefully I'll get to it before it comes out. But um, I think college stuff, like stuff that deals with college and, you know, mysteries around college is very interesting. So definitely excited to see what happens and how she deals with the thriller. Because I've read one of her other books and it was just supremely mediocre. But I think she, I think mysteries could be, like, her genre, so definitely excited for that. Then, on June 1st, actually there are, like, two or three books in June that are, like, on my top five, you know, list. And the first of which I also have an arc for, and I'm so lucky to have an arc for it. It's going to be the first book that I read in February. And that is An Emotion, A Great Delight by Tahid Amafi. Tahid Amafi is one of my favorite authors. If you didn't know, it's not like I have basically a whole shelf dedicated to her. Um, I love her books. I read Shattery, like, I've read all the books in the Shattery series, like, four times. I've read Furthermore and Witchwood. I've read Very Large Expense of Sea, like, three times. I cannot wait for this. It's another contemporary novel. It follows a main character named Shadi, who is a Iranian-American main character, and, um, it is, like, um, it's not related to a Very Large Expense of Sea at all, but they do, they are both contemporary books and they follow Iranian American main characters, but this book um, takes place in 2003 after the U.S. has declared war on Iraq, and um, it takes place in December, I believe, and so I think we just follow her throughout a month of her life and see how it is affecting her, um, and I'm gonna cry, and I know it, so we'd love to see it, but ooh. Ooh, I'm so excited to read this book. I literally cannot wait, and I will be talking about it in my February wrap-up, because it's definitely going to be the first book that I read in February. Then, also on June 1st, I have Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, Taylor Jenkins Reid is also one of my favorite authors. I've read... Right now, she has, like, six books... Or, no. Six books and a novella. And I've read four of her novels and a novella. The other two I haven't read... Um, it's not like I don't want to read them, I just haven't gotten around to them yet, and I've really enjoyed all the books that I've read from her. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, I just recently reread. It's one of my favorite books of all time, and I really enjoyed all the other books that I've read from her. And this book, all I know is that it takes place in the 1980s, and we follow four siblings who are in some way related to McReba, who was one of Evelyn Hugo's husband. I believe it was her fourth husband, cannot remember. But he also was talked about in Evidence of the Affair, which is the Taylor Jenkins Reid novella, and then also in Daisy Jones. So he's sort of like a thread throughout her entire, like, oeuvre. But this um, follows maybe his children, maybe his nieces and nephews, I don't know. But there are four famous siblings, they're famous for different things, and then I believe it takes place over 24 hours or maybe a couple of days, but... You know, by the end of this summer, like, this annual end of summer party that they always have, um, the house goes up in flames and just stuff starts happening, and I'm so excited to read it. I cannot wait. June 1st cannot come fast enough. It seems like it's going to be a really good summer read. Maybe it's just because of the cover and, like, part of the synopsis, but I'm so excited. I know it's going to be good. I trust Taylor Jenkins the read, and I'm very excited to see what this book is going to be like. Then coming out on my birthday, June 15th, I have The Box in the Woods by Maureen Johnson. This is the fourth book in the Truly Devious series, which is one of my favorite series of all time. And um, it's not related to the mystery. So Truly Devious is Truly Devious Vanishing Stare in the Hand on the Wall. That was originally a trilogy that follows one mystery throughout. But this is still follows the main character, Stevie Bell, and her friends, but it's a new murder. And it is a murder that took place at this camp called Camp Wonderfalls in the 1970s. And people were murdered, and then there were, like, these dolls in boxes in the woods. And then, so it was, like, a cold case. And then Stevie Bell, who has sort of become, like, an aficionado since solving the truly devious mystery, she um, gets a call from the camp counselor, the, like, head counselor at Camp Wonderfalls, and is like, 
he's like, girl, you gotta come because someone else has been murdered. And then I think he also gets murdered. And then she cuts there and then she, I'm guessing, solves murder. This is standalone, so it's all gonna be like one murder throughout. And I'm really hoping that we get like the past and present sort of switching timelines as well. I'm so excited, cannot wait. And I also really, really want to do a reading vlog for this book as well because I think it could be interesting. So definitely excited for that. Next on June 22nd, I have Witch Shadow by Susan Dennard, which is the fourth book in the Witchland series. This series is like, I don't really know how to explain it, but I've been reading it for a while and I'm interested to see what happens next. I'm not like, it's not one of my favorite series or anything, but I'm definitely interested in seeing like how things continue and I believe this is the second to last book, so that should be exciting, but I don't really know much about it. Um, I'm just, I'm excited to read it because it's a series that I've started reading and definitely enjoyed. Moving into July, um, the first book that I have is Any Way the Wind Blows by Rainbow Rowell. This is the third book in the Carry On series. Y'all know that I'm not the biggest fan of Rainbow Rowell's contemporary novels, but her fantasy books I've enjoyed. Carry On I really liked and Wayward Son I thought was good, and I'm excited to see how this finale wraps up. This book is going to be like 600 pages, which is crazy, but I, I'm definitely excited to you know, see what happens, and this comes out on the 6th. Did I already say that? I don't know, but again, don't know much about it, but it's a continuation of a series that I've enjoyed so far, so I'm interested to see what happens. Then on the 20th, I have an adult novel, which is Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. This book follows the Lady of Shalott, who is a character in a lot of Arthurian legends, and takes place in Camelot, stuff like that. Don't really know what else, but you know, the cover's intriguing, and I really like Camelot stories, so interested to see how I will like this book. Ooh, then in September, I have my, like, number one or number two book um, on this list, and that is The Bronzed Beasts by Roshni Chakshi, the third and final book in the Gilded Wolves series, which comes out on September 21st. How do I even talk about this book? I don't know. I'm just, I'm so, like, extremely excited to see what happens? I've read The Gilded Wolves and The Silver Serpents like four times each. I have a nearing one hour long reading vlog of that series, uh, me rereading it again, um, which is up on my channel. And oh my god, I cannot wait for book three. I'm just so excited. <sighs> Ooh, okay, it takes place in Venice, and I. Oh, I cannot wait. The ending of The Silver Serpents was way too much. I cannot wait. I'm just, uh, mm, mm. I'm definitely going to be doing a reading vlog to just capture my just excitement because, oh my god, I'm so excited to read this book. And it's it's going to be so good. I know it's going to be so good. I know I'm going to give it five stars. Rush and Chakshi will not disappoint me. Then in October, I have Along the Salt I See by the A. Deborah Baker, who is actually Shonda McGuire. This book comes out on the 12th. Don't know much about it, except that it's the sequel to Over the Woodward Wall, so. Then in November, I have two books. These are like um, two books, and then I have one that doesn't have a release date yet. Um, both of these books do not have covers yet. I believe one of them is going to have a cover reveal very, very soon. But, yeah, and also these don't have definitive dates, so. But they do both come out in November. The first is The Righteous by Renee Othia, which is the third book in the Beautiful series. The first book was The Beautiful, and the second book was The Damned, and I really enjoyed both of those books. Um, I really, 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 really enjoyed The Beautiful. The Damned, I thought, was a good sequel, but it wasn't, like, I don't think it was as good as The Damned. I mean, as The Beautiful, so... What you gonna do? But I am very excited for book three. I don't know why I'm going with this, because there's no cover, but, um... I really want to figure out what happens, and I don't know if this is the last book. Might be second to last, who knows? But, very excited to see what's gonna go down, because... I'm excited. I'm excited to see. I'm definitely excited to see. Then, um, also in November, I have another one that I'm extremely excited for. And that is The Excalibur Curse by Kirsten White. This is the third and final book in the Camelot Rising trilogy. The first was The Guinevere Deception, the second was The Camelot Betrayal, which I have reading vlogs for, because I read them during the reading rush. So I have individual vlogs for both of them. 
and you can find them somewhere on my channel, I don't know where. Um, but I'm so excited to see, and I really, really think that the cover reel is going to be soon, because Kirsten White was like, oh, I have some news to share next week, and she said that, like, yesterday or the day before, so I think a cover reveal is in my future, um, like, near future, so I just I can't wait. I'm so excited to see how this series ends, and to find out Guinevere's real name, I, I can't. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And I really hope that there are arcs so I can read it early. <laughs> and then the last book on my list does not have a definitive release date, um, and that is Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare. All I know is that it is fantasy. It's adult. It's by Cassandra Clare. And it's called Swordcatcher. And it comes out this year. So that's all I really need to know. I'm very excited. And, um... Two books by Cassandra Clare this year that I'm excited for is a good year, so I don't even know what to do myself. I'm so excited, but like, oh, mm, there are so many good book releases coming out this year, and I've been filming for <laughs> quite a while, so that is it for this video. I know we've been here a while. I didn't even think this would take that long, but um, had a lot of books that I'm excited for, so yes that is it for this video all of my social media links are in the description box below if you are excited for any books let me know in the comment section and also um if you are excited for any of the books on my list let me know as well i really hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you in my next video bye